okay, where he's trying to set up. Um, I will be talking about splitting DRM and KMS APIs. Um, the main reason to do that is that we want to allow GPGPU applications, we want off-screen rendering, we want applications to render with DRM or KMS without a running X server. And currently we requ require DRM authentications and other stuff which is kind of bound to uh, Wayland or GLX or DRI. Exactly. And we are trying to uh, create a new API, oh, well, split the device nodes so we can better access management. And that's fine. That's fine. Just keep it. How do I switch? Okay, the current uh, previous one. Yeah. <laughs> the current uh, layout of um, the DRM subsystem is it's basically split between two things: the rendering API and the mode setting API. The rendering API is responsible of creating pictures, drawing pictures, reading them maybe, and doing all the kinds of stuff you want to do with it. And the mode setting API obviously is responsible of controlling your display controller. And the, <laughs> the API we use for rendering is DRM and highly driver specific. You cannot do anything useful with DRM if you have no idea of the driver APIs. On the other side, mode setting is a generic interface. You can use KMS, and there's nothing driver specific. Things like Weston or Plymouth in the API. <laughs> oh, it should not be. <laughs> Let's leave it that way. But um, things like Weston or Plymouth or KMSCon, they don't know anything of the um, uh, display drivers. They just use KMS. And this works already. And the problem we have is that every card is accessed through slash dev, slash DRI, slash card zero, or card one, and so on. But both rendering and mode setting is both done through one device node. And on Linux, we used to do access management via file system modes. And with DRM, we cannot do that because we have two different access modes on the same node. Um, this means we have to home prune uh, mechanisms, with this, uh, which is DRM master and DRM authentication. If you want to do mode setting, you have to be DRM master. DRM master means there's one client which currently opens the card who's well, the DRM master, and there can only be one. And it can drop DRM master, and another client can uh, acquire DRM master again. <laughs> and um, if you want to do rendering, you need to be authenticated. And I want to explain the concept of DRM master now. Yeah, um, in the kernel, it looks like this. We have the DRM device with a lot of stuff around it, um, especially driver specific things. And then we have DRM miners. We can currently create two of them, but one of them is unused. It's a control node. And the other one is the card node, the legacy node. And if you uh, use a space process and you open it, um, you get a DRM file, as you can see here. Um, the DRM file contains a context for your, all your operations you do, and it allows to separate each process from each other. Um, only one of these open files can be DRM master. That means only one of these can do mode setting and can control the display controller. And the API to change which one can do that is DRM drop master and DRM set master. Both of these are limited to CAPSIS admin. That means only root can issue them. But there's one exception. If you're the first one to open the device node, you automatic, uh, automatically become DRM master. The problem is you cannot drop it because DRM drop master is limited to CAPSIS admin. So you need to be root to drop it again. Um, the reason we added that is so we can run X without being root. But that isn't actually working because once we switch a virtual terminal to another session and we switch back, we cannot call DRM setmaster to acquire it again. So 
it's all a bit messed up. Um, now we understand how you can become DRM master. Once you're a DRM master, you can do mode setting and you can also do authentication. So any client that opens the node to do rendering or do any other stuff with the GPU needs to be authenticated. It um, gets some magic number from DRM, which it passes to the X server. And the X server, which is DRM master, it can then issue uh, authentication, uh, authentication IOCTL, and then the client can do whatever it wants. Um, again, the problem with that is you have no way to control the kernel or the in user space, who is allowed to authenticate? This is all left to the X server, but we won't have an X server running on many machines where we want just to GP, GPU, other stuff. So this is also not really working. And additionally, um, in the kernel itself, we also have these DRM master objects, which is something totally different than the DRM master concept. Unfortunately, they're both named the same. Um, these allow to group different files. For instance, if you have one X server running and the other one in the background, um, both of them should get a different DRM master object and all clients for each uh, server are bound to the same DRM master. Um, the problem is we have no way to control which DRM master object a client gets bound to. A client always gets bound to the one which is active once it opens the node. But if you start a client by your service in background, it will get assigned to the foreground node. So this, this is actually the reason why we can't do that now. And that's also the reason why I think we should just drop the DRM master objects in the kernel because they are also unused. So what we're trying to do is to let it look like <laughs> <laughs> well, we just drop the DRM master concept and exactly make it like this. We have only one DRM master object in the kernel and every client gets associated to it. And then we still have the active DRM master is only one of these clients and we can one, uh, yeah, only one of them can be the active DRM master. Um, No. Um, okay. And now we have the still the problem with the authentication. So if we, again, if you have two graphics servers and one is in the foreground, one is in the background, it is switched between them. The foreground one needs to drop DRM master and the background one needs to acquire DRM master. And there's a short time window where none of both is DRM master. And if you have a client which just repeatedly opens the DRM node, it can actually uh, hijack DRM master because it automatically becomes DRM master if no one is active and it opens the node. And this actually works, so you can just, you get a black screen if you have such a client of your machine and you try to switch between X servers. And that's a horrible security breach there, and, but we cannot really fix it because we depend on the behavior. Um, so what we did now is change the kernel to separate both mode setting and rendering. And then we can drop all this. We can drop DRM master, we can drop authentication. And so on the kernel side, it looks like, yeah, exactly. Exactly looks like this. We just add a new DRM miner. And we called it render nodes, and it can be accessed in slash dev slash di slash render d, that's one number. And the render node needs support from the drivers because the driver needs to tell the DRM core which IOCTLs, which commands can be issued on the render node. On the other hand, you cannot do any mode setting on the render node. You cannot do any uh, commands which affect global state. You can just do rendering. And this simplifies the situations for clients because the client no longer has to open dev DRI card zero. A client can now simply look for a render node and open any render node it finds. It uses it to render. Once it has its buffer, it just passes it on to the display server. It doesn't need um, any authentication or any GLX, any DRI. We just open it, we create our GL context, our CL context, and use it. Um, that's already it. That's already it. Yeah. Right. And 
Um, an important fact is that random nodes are not bound to the card node, uh, card serial node. So a lot of people are asking the question, if you have a card and you want to find the random node which is uh, related to it, and that's not what you should do in user space because the random nodes are supposed to be just like an FPU that you have your machine and you use it just to do something, but you don't try to associate it to some card or to some display server. You just use it, and once you get to buffer, you use DMA buff or you use, well, you can't use GMF link, but it's just DMA buff and pass it on. And this simplifies client processing a lot. And this is already in the kernel for 3.12, and we can use it, and yeah. Any questions to that? Yeah. I can repeat. Um, I think the uh, i3 th uh, still uses the GMF link. It doesn't? No, no, it doesn't. The problem with DRI2 is, of course, it uses the GMF link, and you shouldn't use them, they're insecure. The thing with uh, GMF link is uh, one process. Um, creates a name, and it's just an integer. Every other process can just guess it and open the buffer, and you don't want that. And no. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> At least the driver writers always tell me they have protections for it. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the thing is, um, if you don't have GLX, it's not that easy to get in GL context because Mesa didn't provide nice infra uh, infrastructure for that. But we have GBM. If anyone is interested, you can just look at the Western code base or the KMSCon or even Plymouth, I guess, which have examples how to create a GL buffer just without any X or any Wayland or... Yeah, but it uses the GBM library to create a device and then you pass it to EGL and EGL will give you a GL context, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it about render nodes. There's some other stuff we are currently working on, which is mode set nodes, which allows to well, improve the mode setting side because we now made rendering possible without any authentication, and it's really just about the clients. And on the mode setting side, we still have this DRM master concept with this, which makes it hard to work with because you need to be rude to use it. And the idea is to create a separate node or use the control node we currently have, which is unused, um, and then just drop um, every rendering command and only use the um, DRM set master, DRM drop master, drop the capsis admin um, requirement, and allow the KMS API. So you have a separate node which you can control in user space um, by setting the file system access modes, so only a compositor can open it. Once it opens it, it can do drop master and set master as much as it wants without being rude. And that's still something we are working on. Um, that's not upstream yet. Yeah. Yeah, so if anyone is working on the user space side and doing rendering, we highly recommend to switch to render nodes because you can drop a whole lot of code doing the authentication and stuff. Yes. You actually don't need to you add anything to libdrm because you just, libdrm has these helpers which are drm open and drm open by driver or something like that. And the thing with that is, um, it just makes sense with render nodes because we don't want to, well, we just want users to use any node they want and open it and use it. If you had multiple nodes, you, well, you need to look at them, what they can provide to you, and you choose 
whether you use the low end, the high end node, or for example, Mesa is going to either open open or get an FD to a device. So I mean, something in there needs to be made to use this mechanism. But Mesa opens it only if you use it with uh, DRI, DRI2 or DRI1. Yeah, um, so okay, if the, you the, the DRI2 case, it gets a file descriptor. There are actually uh, patches pending on the mailing list from uh, Martin, um, Martin Paris, I guess. Okay. And he did that. It's 10 lines of code, I guess. Yeah. Um, I haven't really worked on that yet because I wasn't interested in the DRI use case. Yeah, exactly. But then, yeah, that would work. Um, the question I have is, uh, is the right now you use FD to PCI ID? Uh, DRI3 uses FD to PCI ID to figure out which driver to load for a particular uh, device. When I get the file descriptor from the X server, I just pass the file descriptor and say, here's your DRI device. And so if I pass it the file descriptor of a render node, is that going to is that is is the current libdrm api that that figures out what driver to use for a particular file descriptor going to work with a render node um you mean to load the right driver dynamically right. um you can actually create the um, um so it goes and finds figures out what it goes and grubs through dev to figure out which pci id is associated it goes through it it grubs through like slash proc or something to figure out which PCI ID is associated with your, with your file description. What you can actually do is if uh, a node has a static ma minor and major number, you can just create the node. So you just create the DRI render D128 node and the card serial node. And if you open it, the kernel automatically sees there's no backing driver for it and looks in the KMOD uh, registry whether there's a driver registered for it. We can set mod alias for these. But these require static major and minor numbers, so I'm not sure about that. Um, no, it wasn't my question. The question is, how do I get the PCI ID for the underlying device once I have a file descriptor? Why do you want that? That's how I figure out what driver to load, what, what, what user space driver to load. Um, you can, yeah, exactly. You can use the get version. Uh, get bus ID IOCTL on the FD. Oh, is there one now? Okay. Uh, that's not how, that's not how libdrm works. The, yeah, there is one which returns the bus yeah, ID. Go, exactly. go look at what libdrm does that today. It walks through your system oh, slash sys okay. and looking for stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> ah, okay. No, there's, there's a get bus ID description. Okay. I figured there should be, but that's not how it worked today. <laughs> I was going to say, it, just as an aside, it's nice to not assume there's a PCID and fall back to doing a, a DRM get version, which will give you the driver name, and then picking a pipe driver based on that, uh, because some of these new drivers don't have, you know, are not PCI devices. Uh, so. and there's like, I don't know, four or five different places in Mesa that need to be fixed up because they all assume everything's PCI, which is kind of annoying, but, yeah. Okay, apart from that, we still have, uh, as I said, the mode set nodes, which will also allow to split mode setting resources across multiple compositors. So if you have one display controller and only one card, you can still use two compositors, which one uses the internal display, one uses the external display, and so on. But this is still ongoing, we haven't, push that upstream yet. And if uh, there are no more questions, I guess we can continue with the CDF. <laughs>